Hey, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> Jamie McDonald and Mike Beaning here with episode 16 of Mirrorless Minutes. And uh, the working title of this show is Olympus is Going Wide. And I think <laughs> if you're an Olympus user or a Micro Four Thirds user in general, you probably know what that refers to. And that refers to the two new lenses that Olympus has officially unveiled. And that is an 8mm f1.8 fisheye, part of their pro line, weather sealed, metal construction and also a 7 to 14 f 2.8 pro lens as well and then again you know weather sealed and just bad to the bones lens so what's going on mike welcome to the show yeah, yeah thanks thanks no it's uh yeah it's been a great couple of weeks finally finished some of my travels which was nice to be home but great time to to be home too with those new releases and uh able to uh actually i held that 7 to 14 shot with it for about an hour and uh, when I was out at the Olympus headquarters, it's just amazing lens. So I know we'll talk more about it, but and I know you've had the fisheye. I was looking on Google Plus. I was seeing if we could do the show in fisheye. I don't think we can. Do so, the what? <laughs> do the show in fisheye. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would have been cool. <laughs> yeah, that would have been cool, but I don't think we can do that. So, yeah, let's let's talk about it. I mean, you, you've got the most experience for sure with this. Right on. So, yeah. um. So I'll talk probably more heavily about the lens that I've got right now, and that's the uh, it's the eight millimeter fisheye. So mm -hmm. I've had this. I went to Whistler about a month ago <laughs> for Olympus uh, for a press junket, and got to shoot with the seven to fourteen and the eight millimeter. And before I left, I was given uh, this pre-production model of the the eight millimeter to bring home and shoot and do some sample photos for um, the R and D guys over in Japan, and. Uh, Basically, uh, man, what can I say? It's it's a fisheye, 180 degree field of view. It's weather sealed, uh, metal construction. It's got an integrated pedal hood, so um, you know you don't have to worry about uh, your the front element because the front element, you know, for those who aren't familiar with the fisheye, let me just kind of go over how this works a bit. So the front element on a fisheye or many of the like ultra wide lenses isn't flat like you're like you're used to with. Um, I don't have a lens handy, but yeah, it's like bulbous, a 40 or, like a 12 to 40 or something like that. You know, yeah. the front element's flat. And you can see on this one, it's it's rounded. So uh, some of the the lesser brands of lenses might not have necessarily an integrated hood. And that front element, because it sticks out, can bump into things pretty easily. So this has the integrated pedal hood, which does offer a little bit of protection for your lens. Um, like I said, you know, it's part of the pro lineup. So it is... Uh, splash proof and freeze proof and all of that and as testament to its splash proofedness or whatever however <laughs> you would say that splash proofness um i've been drenched with this so we were at uh and i'm gonna go through some uh some photo shares here in a minute but uh one of the photos was taken on the lake michigan shoreline the other week and even though the water is frigid cold i decided to get right down up against it where some of the small waves were breaking and you know, me, rocket scientist yeah. that I am, I turned my back for just one split second, turned around, you know, with my camera held low, and sure enough, a wave just slammed right into the front of the lens. And it kind of stopped me from shooting for a few minutes because it was covered in water. But aside from that, you know, it was just a matter of wiping it off and just going right back to shooting. So, um, yeah, that's that's that shot. You got with the log or whatever? When you yeah, is that, yeah. Well, I've got, a, I've got awesome. another one from there, but it was, yeah, it was one of the series of those mm -hmm. photos that you I can see there. the waves coming up close. Hey, talk about the uh, because the 714 has a two, the, the cap on the front of the lens because it actually reverse clips it like, yeah, you know, the, so the front seal that's an excellent cap. That's a good yeah. thing to bring up. So, basically, you know, with a traditional lens, I'm not actually going to reach back and I'm going to grab all right, we can wait. Yeah, <laughs> just have to. Don't Oh, camera's camera's floating floating around. Around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I've got the 12 to 40 here. <clears throat> and, you know, everybody's familiar with the, the typical, you know, lens cap style. You know, some of them are center pinch, some of them pinch on the edge. But they all grip on the inside of the uh, of the ring of the front element of the lens, you know, where you would screw your filters in. Yeah, your threads. <clears throat> so, but on a lens like this, you don't, you can't really do that because, again, you've got that really rounded front piece of glass there. So what this does is this one actually clips and grabs on the outside of the lens. And you know what? It's I don't even know what in the heck it's grabbing onto because there's really not much there for it to hold. But it's grabbing on, and it's 
it's on there. And, and you can't pull it off. I mean, no. that's because I was with Frank Smith and we were looking at that and we we're both actually like confused. Yeah. <laughs> so what the heck is this grabbing on to? And it's like a, it's a reverse grab. It goes to the inside. Yep. And pushes it out. It pushes like, it it's, out. It's, yeah. What's nice is those, I mean, especially because, I mean, those things are, you know, are easy to break, easy to lose. And oh, you, you grab that. That thing is going to yeah. stay on there. Yep. You know. um, do you want to talk a little bit about the seven to fourteen because you did have hands-on time with that in Pennsylvania? Yeah, I sure I sure did. Yeah, the, the seven to fourteen. Well, for, first off, I think one of the things that um, you know, I, and I've heard this a lot of people saying, "Well, it's built or feels like a tank," and then people are saying, "Well, I'm worried that we're getting away from uh, you know light gear now, and we're starting to get you know to DSL." That's just wrong. I mean, I looked at it, I just looked it up. So I'm looking down here. It's 19 ounces. Yeah. The, thing is way it feels like nothing <laughs> okay so and i had it on an em1 it felt great right balance everything i agree totally well, you know and i think um you know i've heard people say oh it's so heavy it's so heavy you know heavy heavy is a, a pretty relative term when it comes to what we're shooting with now right you know i'm <laughs> That's what sure I'm it's heavy compared to like the little tiny 17 millimeter yeah it's heavy sure. because <laughs> it's an f2.8 well, it's it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's in the glass you know so naturally it's going to be heavy right. but Heavy compared to this, yeah, sure, it's heavy compared to this. Heavy compared to a traditional standard like APS-C lens of equivalent focal range and aperture, hell no, not even close. Uh, I mean, so no, it's, it's more than half, more than half, uh, you know, more than half as little, yeah, half as much. Yeah. I mean, it's half as much as as those easily. Right. And um, but but the solid build, I mean, I I think both of us have always agreed, and so many people do that that twelve to forty is just miraculous it's so solid i i really feel like this one might this lens and, and even the, the fish eye because i did hold it it actually feel better i don't yes. know why it i don't know if it's because they're a little wider on the grip when you're holding it um you know or it's that front pedal lens cap it just feels you know or the the pedals that it feels so solid um but it, it's it's crazy and then and then because i kept trying to blast it up into the sun and i've got one shot um you know, to, to get it super wide, and I just wanted to see how bad the flaring is. Everybody always talks about flaring because I had the 714, the Panasonic one, and um, unfortunately, I didn't learn until after that Olympus and Panasonic for that lens and Olympus cameras do not get along. No, no, <laughs> they're not not good friends, and they can do other things. You know, other other lenses will work just fine, but yeah. that lens was really rough, and I had I, I had to get rid of it. It was crazy. Um, there was, you know, chromatic aberration on almost every shot that, yeah. I, that had any kind of light in it. So, but uh, amazing build and, and just the clarity on the sides. I mean, that's what I was looking for, you know. It's just yeah. edge to you edge to sharp. That was there. So, um, didn't you get those really, did you get those super wide um, cloud shots from the top of the mount? Was that with that or is that with the 8? Yeah, millimeter? no, that was with the 7 to 14. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's. You know, coming from um, the the standard four third or the the Olympus DSLRs, that was you know kind of where I got my start in photography. And when I first kind of got hooked up with Olympus and they were just loaning me gear, you know, before the mm -hmm. visionary program, one of the lenses that I had the opportunity to use was the original seven to fourteen. And right. I, it's funny, you know, one of those things I tell people, and it sounds so corny probably to everybody else, but to me, it, it still holds true. Like, it was like this big epiphany it was like a religious experience it like changed everything about photography for me to hold that lens and shoot with it just because i had never mm -hmm. shot with anything that was so wide and it was so razor sharp and the colors just right. kind of popped right out of that lens and i had some reservations about whether they could do the same kind of thing optically with something so small and i'll tell you what mm -hmm. man they hit it out of the ballpark with that lens so if anybody is a regular four-thirds user or has any experience with you know the re the first Olympus seven to fourteen, and are wondering if the Mzuiko seven to fourteen for micro four thirds is gonna live up to that? Yeah, it it I think it might even surpass it a little bit in all yeah. honesty. So um, yeah, the seven to fourteen, I know I know what you're talking about. It's yeah, I think I think you have new technology from when that one was built. The, the oh, older. totally. And um, and I know I think uh, Bob, one of the guys that's coming out to our workshop this weekend i think he has might have had that 7 to 14 or yes. certainly shooting with it maybe before yeah and it, it is great but boy when you look at those that size 
Yeah. Um, oh, you know, as excited as I am, I mean, and you know, you, you've got the eight millimeter already, but obviously I'm real excited to get that in my hands. Um, yeah. As excited as I am to get it in my hands, I'm excited to see what people are going to shoot with it. Right. Just the stuff that Peter put out there and, and I've seen others put out today already a couple. Uh, and those are amazing shots. You and know, uh, so it's, it opens up creativity once again. <laughs> yep. You know, and I think it's a good time to discuss maybe, you know, what you can do with an eight millimeter fisheye or just a mm -hmm. fisheye in general, I guess. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of discussions popping up where people are saying, you know, well, why would I spend so much money on a fisheye? You know, you know, why wouldn't I just go with the seven to 14? Cause the seven to 14 is one millimeter wider and it's well, right. You know, you've got to start thinking about your field of view. The 7 to 14 mm -hmm. millimeter is not a 180 degree field of view. And um, people say, well, everything's crazy distorted. You know, you can't really use it for much other than just, you know, gimmick. Not true. You know, if you're somebody who likes landscapes, I that's my bread and butter. It's what I love to shoot, you know. Yeah. If you compose with your horizon line in the center of the lens, yep. you get to where you don't really see any distortion unless... Mm -hmm you have an object in the foreground, then that's going to be distorted so that it's, well, coming towards you, you know? Right, exactly. But if you've just got, you know, an open vista and you center it up, which goes against all of your, you know, your rules of composition, but mm -hmm. um, whatever, you just get this perfectly wide, wide, mega wide angle shot, you know? So for me as a landscape photographer, I'm all about it. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's like shooting a panorama with one shot. <laughs> with one I shot, mean, yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, you stop really and think about it. 180 degrees, you know, you could literally on tripod shoot, mm -hmm. spin it around, get on the other side of it, shoot, and stitch it together, and you have a 360 yeah. degree panel. There you go. Now I can see that you're going to go out tonight and try that. <laughs> 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 so um do you want to do you want to do an image share so i know, yeah. I know we've got images to share from both of these lenses you know among other things yeah so. sure well you know what let me let me share mine first because sure. i only have the one one image and i have a couple others but one from that that lens and then because i know you're you have a few more and i'd like to hear that too so let's see okay uh do you see the the steel stacks there yep all right great yep this is uh in bethlehem pennsylvania out uh near the Olympus uh, headquarters where, where I was there and where I got to try the 7 to 14. And this is straight out of the camera, JPEG. I just grabbed it tonight, actually, just before. But um, out in the – I'll try to use my mouse here. But out here, here's where the, the sun is out, out actually over on the side. And I was trying to get this thing to flare off and then turn with the dark and the light contrast. But uh, just a great shot. I mean, the width. From here to here, I was looking at that. Go, I'm never going to get that in the thing, and uh, it is, that's great. It's just, it's a lovely lens. Let me put okay. it that, that way. So I've been there. I know where you were standing when you shot yeah. it, and I know how big that is. Tell people roughly how tall the the front of that structure is, the the darker part, and how close you were to it. Kind of give people an idea of yeah. I was how that probably worked. thirty feet away. from from that maybe 20 feet away from that at that point because uh, there's a fence line on the bottom here that you can't get up to it um but height wise it's gonna be hundreds hundreds of feet i would think these stacks 200 feet i don't know maybe at least 100 feet i would say but the, steel stacks. the the dark part yeah. right in front of you though is probably what 40 feet tall oh easy yeah to start with yeah yeah so, I mean, so you can see how much it grabs it's like shooting a boat this is actually has it looks like a boat yeah. <laughs> from from the side and it's you know the old steel plant in bethlehem pennsylvania um but uh yeah it's in fact that's even hard to grasp onto when you don't have anything over here to you know reference how large this is i mean i can tell you this there are guys up here working because they're putting in a walkway across here um, so people can get up closer and those guys look very small they're not up on this one here but i do have another picture they, so that tells you how large <laughs> this this thing was. Um, let me drop down to the the next one, and uh, this this is uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Looking out, uh, I just can't believe how well it was. Really nice they had the windows clean in the hotel because this is actually sunrise from from the hotel. But uh, you know, with the great the sun hitting across the the landscape there and touching the houses, and it's just a great old village shot. 
I mean, this I really love this shot. This was shot with the 4150, uh, and uh, put together. I put this together in the new Lightroom panel. Just about three shots, actually, just to put the short one together. I just wanted to capture that sun from side to side. Um, last week, I spent a bunch of time in Austin and Texas, throughout Texas. So, had some time, and uh, you know, we had. One night, the first night I got there, we had seven inches of rain. If anybody's been watching Texas weather, we didn't have anything like Dallas or whatever, but we did capture the rain while we were there. And, uh, you know, rain clouds, it's a its a great time to pull out the art filters. This is uh, the with the EM5 Mark II and the 14 to 42 EZ lens, just running outside quickly, knowing what I've got in clouds and trying to snap that thing. So that was uh, just love that cloud formation. Don't get a lot of that in the city out here. We get that much room to shoot. And uh, this next one's in Fredericksburg, Texas. This church here um, is from 19, built in 1906, St. Mary's Catholic Church. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful old church. Uh, pristine, clean inside. Uh, I couldn't uh, believe no one was in there. Obviously, it was, uh, I think we might have been in there on a Friday morning. Um, but it was fantastic ability to shoot. And this is actually an HDR, three shots, because it was very dark inside there. Um, but HDR right right through Lightroom. So as you can tell, I'm sort of using the Lightroom stuff here with the HDRs. And the next one here, Pano, this is on our way out of Fredericksburg. This one here is a nine-shot uh, Pano of the countryside with the, just after that horrible rain and the sun breaking through. I just had a pull over when I saw the rays coming in. It was just amazing. Um, you can't see them here, but a few cows grazing over here. Um, you know, most of these are cactuses, so that's how you know real quick it's uh, Texas and not Michigan. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's just amazing that what that new Lightroom panel can do. And this is shot handheld with the 40 to 150. Jeez. Um, you know, obviously uh, in, uh, you know, vertical, uh, just zipping across nine shots. So yeah. nine shot panel that make one hell of a large print. <laughs> this, uh, this this is large boy when you put this out <laughs> when yeah. you when you export it out it was it was dragging and I I've got a nice new uh, MacBook and it was dragging on that so <laughs> but uh, all right well let's see what you got all right so I'm, I'm basically I just kind of want to go over um, all these shots are are ones that were taken with uh, with the two new lenses so. Hmm. All right, I'll pull those up. So this first shot is, uh, of course, from Whistler. You know, that was when I had the hands-on time. And I'm starting off with the 7 to 14 first. So this was shot on the peak of uh, Whistler Mountain. It's one of the uh, the stone sculptures up there called an Anook Shook. And, again, you know, just it's without having a person in front of it, it's kind of tough to, to describe just how big things are. But, um, like, I'm 5'6" and i'm like as tall as the legs on these things okay so that gives you an idea how tall it is so it's probably like you know 12 or 13 foot tall um and i'm standing away from this thing probably about five feet hmm. which is just incredibly weird to keep walking closer and closer and closer to something so that you get it large enough in the shot to where it starts to fill some of the frame and then you look down from the viewfinder and realize that you're darn near touching it. So, and you know, again, shot, you know, composed so that I have, I like shooting with the composition so that I have a lot of sky and you get like that big sweeping feel to the sky. So, uh, so this is just, you know, seven to 14. Um, and this is basically everybody that was there for this press event with Olympus. Um, and we're in some, of this place called the Barefoot Bistro and they have this ice bar where you can do vodka tasting and the reason I wanted to share this is not just because of all the awesome people that are in it but <laughs> because of how small this room is so width wise where the front of this room is where where everybody's kind of huddled that's probably like seven feet wide okay so it's really narrow and the guy that was working in the bar that took our photo is probably again another like four feet in front of this girl that's closest to the camera here on the left so super tight quarters and um 
it's easy to get everybody in the shot with a lens like that. And this again, you know, is at the widest end. It's at seven millimeters. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve's Digicams did a review, and there's a fellow back here on the right hand side with a purple ski cap on. He was the one writing for Steve's Digicams, and he mentioned that it's a really expensive selfie lens if you want it to be because you can at arm's length mm -hmm. hold that out, and you can get not only yourself but like the entire world behind you in the shot. So um, there you go. <laughs> the next shot is again another you know Whistler shot, and this is at the summit of uh, Blackcomb Mountain, and this is in the lodge at the top, the restaurant, and it was closing time, and I kind of hung out trying to catch the last gondola down so that I could get some architectural shots in here because I love the big timbers and all of that. So I waited for the lady to finish putting the last of the chairs up, and as soon as she walked past me, I popped off the shot so that I could just kind of take in the the largeness of it with nobody in it again those so those three shots are all with the 7 to 14 all shot what, what do you think that what's that room what's the like ceiling height you think oh there? good grief uh so that ceiling yes. is probably 35 feet you know oh. it's yeah. it's a big room i mean it'll accommodate 100 people easy in that mm -hmm. room so um that was the last of the 7 to 14 so the next shot is the rest of these this next four are 8 millimeter and they're all selected for specific reasons okay so this one is just to show you just how crazy um distorted you can get your shots you know playing on the fact that it is a fisheye and you do get this warped sense of uh representation from it so this is in washington dc this is the air force memorial these spires are supposed to represent uh this formation that fighter jets do when they do shows the three of them go up and then break off from one another and these structures, the tallest one, each one's a little bit different height than the other. The tallest one, I think they said is 175 or 177 feet. So they're really tall, like super tall. Mm -hmm. And um, the one on the left and on the right, I'm probably 15 feet back from the base of those. So I'm actually really close and just tilted back so that I could fit them all in. Oops. So I don't know why I did that. So that was just uh, me wanting to show you the distortion that you can get. The next shot is one that I chose to show the close focusing ability. And that's something we didn't mention about these lenses is that you yeah. can focus, you can have your lens while well, pretty much almost touching your subject. Both of the lenses have super close focusing. Mm -hmm. um, so this is my dog and I was laying in the grass with him and trying to just get a shot of him really close. And I don't know what it was, but the camera would get close and he would start licking his nose like it uh, it was just some weird reaction. So I was getting pictures of it. On the third lick, he didn't not just get his nose, but he actually licked the front of the lens. I was that close. So just the act of him sticking his tongue out, I was so close focusing that he could actually touch it with his tongue. And he's a Shih Tzu, so it's not like he has a giant tongue. So I was probably literally, you know, an inch away from his face taking these photos. It's crazy. Um and it's weather sealed. Weather sealed and puppy, yeah. puppy <laughs> drool sealed too, <laughs> right. luckily for me. Um, so you were talking about flare. Mm -hmm. um, I've shot with the Rokinon 75 millimeter, and to do this shot with that lens, I would have an incredible amount of flare. Um, the zero coating on, the, uh, on these two lenses, it's an Olympus-developed coating that helps reduce uh, ghosting and flaring. The only flare I could get is down here towards the lower left, and there's this little tiny bit right here where the sun is, and that's about it for the whole shot. And I'm pretty much, as you can see, shooting straight into the sun. Oh, yeah. Um, and this was just, again, it's so fun to take advantage of the fact that the field of view is so wide. I mean, these tulips, well, they're not trees. They look like trees in the shot. I just leaned down, stuck my camera down inside of the bed of tulips, and just shot up to get this shot. And this is, that was straight out of camera. And I have no idea how this keeps going forward by itself, but it's doing it. So uh, last shot, again, fisheye. And this was me talking about composing with the horizon line in the center. I was just a little bit off center, so you can see a little bit of bow down here. But aside from that, most people would probably be hard-pressed to tell that this was actually shot with a fisheye. Um, again, just playing on the fact that it's so wide and has the ability to close focus. I was actually in between these two rocks, and this is on the – Lake Michigan shoreline here in Holland, but uh, now are those rocks small? No, <laughs> no. Well, I mean they're yeah. big. I mean they're not like boulders as big as cars, right. but you know they were probably like um, 
three foot tall. You know, okay, each one. yeah. So they're not size, size of a model. No, no, no. I mean, they 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 weren't as big as they look in this shot, but they weren't you know mm -hmm. pebbles or nothing like that. So, but yeah. again, I just wanted to show that you could use a lens like that as um as a landscape lens as long as you compose with the horizon line centered up on the lens. You know, you can get pretty cool looking landscape shots. So. Yeah, and I think even if you want to take that bow out a little bit, can't you go into the oh, in Lightroom easily. just easily? Just yes. Drag it to where you want. I haven't, I haven't tried it yet, you know, and it's something that mm -hmm. I'll do. Um, but generally, you can take the, you could probably take the lens profile for like a Canon sixteen millimeter, and yeah. apply it to that lens, and it would have zipped it perfectly straight almost. And if whatever mm -hmm. it didn't do, you can manually adjust it yourself. There's also a program out there that I used to use. Um, and then when I upgraded Max to a, to a new one, I screwed something up and I can't figure out where my license is for it and I didn't buy it again yet, but it's called Fisheye Hemi. And Fisheye Hemi does an insane job of defishing your photos. I mean, it is like magic really? happening for your eyes. And you can take, you know, an absurd distorted picture and straighten it mm -hmm. out like pretty well. So <laughs> there's a lot, of, a lot of different uses for a fisheye other than just putting it like right up in your puppy's face and getting shots of him. Like yeah. Himself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, and didn't, uh, also with the announcement, I know neither of us are probably huge underwater shooters, but they, they announced some new things so you can use that fish eye, right? Yes. Underwater. Yeah. So when that onto the, um, the Olympus housing, correct? It goes over the Olympus housing. Right. But they also, they did, um, you know, there's, so there's uh, new ports, that accommodate those lenses if i'm not mm -hmm. mistaken no right. but you know one other thing too you know that they announced was uh firmware updates for the em1 and the em5 mark ii and those firmware updates are catering to those people who are into diving they're to help with color correction underwater yeah and again you know it's it's literally not something that i have ever done scuba diving <laughs> so i don't know what is needed, what, you know, how it functions or what have you. But I'm sure we have some viewers out there. I know we have some viewers out there oh, yeah. that are divers. So hopefully it's something that they wanted to see on the cameras. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, what else? Uh, we've got a little bit of time left. Uh, sure. Uh, um, can, you got some news or something you want to Yeah, cover? so okay. I was just kind of trolling, you know, my usual sites online and came across a story on uh, Petapixel talking about uh, software from Microsoft called Hyperlapse. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, something was done by Instagram of a similar nature a while ago. Uh, but this thing that Microsoft is doing, I think it might be a little bit different how they do it. Uh, Instagram, if I'm not mistaken, I think it just takes your video and speeds it up into like a, yeah. like a, like a fast time lapse, I guess, using mm -hmm. your video. But what the Microsoft application does same kind of concept. You can adjust how fast it speeds things up. Um, but also what it does, is it seems to analyze the frames and it looks for motion. So if you're walking behind your kids, you know, as they're going down a walkway and you're walking and, you know, every couple of steps, you know, you might move the camera a little bit. The Microsoft software, what it does, it takes your video, analyzes it. And I think it's subtracting those frames that are like movements, like jarring movements, removes them. So what you end up with when it's all put together is a sped up video that's super smooth and it looks like it's on like a steady cam rig. So it's just kind of gliding along. It's hard to explain. Um, but if you just go to the Petapixel website, uh, P E T A P I X E L dot com and find that story, you, they have a video that shows what it does. Pretty cool stuff. I know, um, right now currently it's just for windows machines. Of course, cause it's Microsoft, uh, the windows mm -hmm. phone, of course, because it's Microsoft and mm -hmm. uh, you can also use it on, select android devices and sadly none of the android devices i have are select so <laughs> i haven't had the chance to preview it yet but i've got some ideas on how to use it um i might have to find some uh, windows pc somewhere i don't know there's none in my house yeah try it out. yeah well yeah, i'll figure it out i think i can help too oh can i do one other <laughs> update too so yeah yeah um, so i talked about the huffa holder on the last episode oh, yeah. I promised it would be giving away three and i promised everybody we'd do it when i did my review of the huffa holder um I started the review of the Huffa holder. It's just been a little busy, so I haven't really gotten into the review, but um, it got started this week, and uh, look for that to drop on the Mirrorless Minutes website next week, and 
once that goes up, just throw a comment in there. I don't care what you comment. You can comment anything, and you'll be entered to win one of three of these Huffa Holder lens cap clips. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. 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 Well, let's see. I'm I'm just going to sort of do a pick, but I'm oh. excited to use this thing. I don't know if I can I'm trying to see how I can make it. Uh, let me hit my screen so I can see this thing here called the lens skirt. This is not something you you wear. Um, <laughs> this. It's, it's, a, it's a little expensive, but everybody knows how much I think I love uh, live composite. And sometimes at night, I just can't get out after working all day in a hotel. But if they've got, I'm always usually up on a high floor. If they've got clean windows, which m most of them usually do. Oh. This thing's got some suction cups in there. I know what it does. Yeah. Wow, and then you just, it fits any, any size lens. So it takes, you don't have to worry about all the room, your lights in the room. Because every time I try one from a, uh, room I'm, I'm trying to put sheets or I'm trying to put my coat over the back of the camera that I can't see anything and I got to <laughs> hurry up and uh, this just just you know get it all set up where you want to go and and it blocks out everything no reflections whatsoever and uh, a little expensive I you know we got a link um, through your link there uh, and, and we'll put it in the show notes but uh, it, it's definitely worth it if you're gonna do some of this stuff or you know, we got out of Chicago coming up, and we're going to be uh, at a high rise. The place that we've got, it's got an extreme high rise that looks out over the city. I'm excited to use that there. Um, so yeah, check it out. It's called Lens Skirt, and uh, yeah, and I know a lot of guys that shoot lightning shots. So because obviously sometimes you're not outside, it's probably not the best thing to be outside under trees when you're shooting lightning. Um, so you can shoot good lightning shots through windows. I mean, it doesn't have to be a high-rise hotel. You can do it out your front window if you got, you know, room or whatever that's uh, there. So, yeah, check it out. It's pretty cool. A cool little item. Yeah, that's a super yeah. cool pick. Again, it's one of those things that you look at it and you're like, damn, why didn't I think of that, you know? I mean, yeah, that's what I, I'm looking well, you at. you thought it about too. it with a coat, you know. But you <laughs> yeah, I've got coats. I've got everything. Coat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's the deal is these darn suction cups with it. So, yeah, that, that sounds good. And, uh, well, I think the only other thing that's excited with this weekend, we've got a, a, our workshop, Olympus Only, uh, OMD and Penn, uh, sold out and uh, coming up this Sunday. And, hey, great time. We got, uh, you know, the new EM5 Mark II. And uh, I don't know if any, I think somebody will be there shooting that. But I know we've got people coming with EM1s and EM10s. And uh, we're going to just go through the menus. We're going to tear it apart. Yeah, I'm super excited to yeah. do that workshop, yeah. you know, and it's something that I guess I'll throw that out there, you know, that if there's if there's enough interest, maybe it's something we could take on the road to another location mm -hmm. outside of Michigan as well. I know that um, there's nothing better than talking about not just photography, but product that you're passionate about and teaching people about those products as well. So I think in all honesty, even though this workshop is a small one, I'm just mm -hmm. as excited about this as I am out of Chicago, to be honest with you. you know, yeah. It's cool to connect with people over over the gear that we have. So Yeah, exactly. And I and I, you know, like I said, I think even when we put it together, I bet you we end up a uh, few comments talking about bags too. Everybody's always going Oh yeah. I think I said one thing about bags today on the Facebook. I think I have thirty eight comments on bags. <laughs> yep. It's yeah. one of those things. It's one of those yeah. topics. It's like politics or religion or right. camera right. bags. You yeah, know exactly. <laughs> yeah, they're a lot safer than the politics one. Oh, which is good. definitely. definitely. <laughs> All right, so I guess that wraps up today's show. Um, and I th we're going to go back to the Wednesday uh, time frame or the Wednesday schedule from All here right. on out. My son finishes his last track meet next week, and life goes back to somewhat normal. So, uh, <laughs> thanks everybody for tuning in tonight. And you know, as Mike mentioned, we'll have a link in the show notes for the lens skirt which definitely is much better than using your jacket or coat. Mm -hmm. We'll also link to uh, the two new lenses that we spoke about so you can swing over and check out a couple places to buy those if you're so inclined. Um, and I'll also put a link in there to fellow Olympus Trailblazer, Peter Baumgarten did a really killer post on his website about the eight millimeter fisheye. Give you some good shots of uh, what you can accomplish with that in a beautiful landscape setting. So uh, thanks again for tuning in Excellent. everybody. And uh, thanks again, Mike, and we'll see everybody on the next show. All right, man. See you, everybody.